Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good whatever you're experiencing. My name is John Siskin, and I'm here to talk to you about meters today. Um, once upon a time, we used film, and meters were absolutely essential when we used film because there was a long period of time between the moment we took the picture and the moment we saw the final image. When you work with a modern digital camera, you don't need a meter because you can evaluate so quickly. However, you may work with video, in which case you're probably going to want a meter at some point. You may be working with film. I don't know. Or you may be watching this because you want to see how difficult things used to be. When we use our eye to make an image, our eye is an incredible device for composing, for making decisions, but because our eye is also an incredible device at compensating for our surroundings, it is frequently fooled when we talk about exposure. So, when you walk outside on a bright sunny day, your eye instantly manages exposure and color. If you walk indoors in a fluorescent environment, once again, your eye instantly manages exposure and color. You don't see people as being significantly greener when you walk under a fluorescent light, though if we were working with something that didn't compensate, you would see an ugly skin tone. Perhaps you've taken a photograph where you've seen that ugly skin tone. There are meters that talk about color, but today we're just going to talk about meters that talk about exposure. So once upon a time, we used devices that helped the eye to understand exposure. This little device is an extinction meter, and you would look through it and see when you could see light through it. Problem was, it still uses the eye. It's an aid to the eye, but it doesn't do a very good job because it fools the eye much of the time. Before this, we used little pieces of paper, and we've always used menus to try to figure exposure. Until quite recently, Kodak would still write a menu and put it inside the film box. But once upon a time, back in the 1920s, there's a company named Weston who did something that was really valuable. They made a meter for photographers that used an electronic system to actually manage and understand exposure. This device was the first meter ever designed specifically for photographers. You can see it's got this dial over here, and this dial enabled you to take a reading that you would see here and transfer that reading to the dial using information about film or sensitized material and come up with an exposure, alternating apertures and shutter speeds. An incredible thing. It used two photovoltaic cells, that is, essentially the same things you might use to power your house, the things that you might use to charge a car or something like that, and it had a little device that read how much electricity the photovoltaic cells created. And if you maybe can see this in this picture, I doubt it, there are little baffles in here to make sure the thing looks straight ahead instead of making it look all over. An incredible piece of engineering. There were electronic meters before this, but they were designed for something else, and then they had menus, once again, on how to use them with still photography. Kind of a pain in the butt. But this thing, absolutely wonderful. We went on to create much, much, much more sophisticated meters over the years. And many of these meters are available to you today. I'd like to take a look at just a couple of them here before we go through these things in detail. This is a spot meter. If you've spent a lot of time studying the zone system and trying to understand exposure, this meter's only a very, 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 very tiny amount of the scene you're looking at, one degree. So you look through this thing and there's a tiny little circle in the center and that's all that it reads. If I point this at one of my lights out there, it gives me a pretty high reading. If I point it at the shadows out in front of me, it gives me a very, very low reading. This is my modern meter. 
This is the one that I carry with me when I shoot film. It has built into it a spot meter, just like that one I was holding. It also has an incident meter, so it'll read the light falling onto the subject. We'll talk about this way of metering in more of our videos as you sit through these things. Please sit through these things. <laughs> um, <clears throat> anyway, this is a very sophisticated device that gives you a lot of information. A few moments ago I mentioned color, and there are meters that read color. This is probably one of the best that was ever built. This will tell you how to fix color for any light source in any situation. If I turned it on now, it would read that I'm shooting under tungsten lights. If I took it outdoors, it would read that I'm shooting under daylight. But it would also tell me the exact filtration that I might need to match my lights to any source. Now your digital camera does this, but it only does it for one light. So if you're trying to manage light from several sources, either for a digital shot, for a still shot, or for a cinema shot, a meter like this might still be incredibly valuable to you. I hope you'll sit through a few more of these uh, metering videos as we go through this stuff and explain each sort of metering and each history of meters in detail. Thank you for joining us today.